Hello everyone and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today, we are on episode number 112. As always, I am Shane Thomas. You can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3. You can also go to codekarate.com and sign up for the newsletter. Today we're going to be picking up where we left off and going over a little bit more in detail on the JavaScript Confirm module that we started on yesterday and show you how I fixed one small bug and how we can make an administration page to make this module even better than it was before. But before we get started, this episode is sponsored by Drupalize.me. If you've not checked out Drupalize.me, it is one of the best places to learn about Drupal. They have tons of videos from the very beginning concepts to some of the most advanced concepts you will ever need if you're building a Drupal site. I've used it in the past and had great luck. So I suggest you give it a try, and if you do, use the coupon code CK20FEB so they know that I sent you there, and you also get 20% off. So go check them out. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you'll remember from yesterday is we basically set up, so if you go to the node add article page and you try to navigate away, it gives you a nice JavaScript pop-up that asks you if you want to leave or stay on the page. The issue was even if you clicked the save button it still gave you that same pop-up message so what we wanted or at least what I wanted is if you click the save button to have it not give you the message because you're actually submitting the form on the page so I added a little bit of code just to add this check here. So this is a little bit different than yesterday, but it is in the attachment on yesterday's episode, episode 111. And basically I added this code here that says if a form submit is clicked, so this, for instance, this button here is, has a form submit class on it. If this button is clicked, then I'm going to set this submit equals true. And now when the window unloads, it checks and says if it's not a form submit then go ahead and return this confirm form that's going to pop up but if it is a form submit it will just pass through and let things work correctly so we'll go ahead and give this a try I'm also going to give this a path here for a future reason you'll see in a little bit so I'll save this and you notice I did not get the pop-up there. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to make an administrative page that lets you set multiple paths. So instead of just having this hard-coded path in the module, let's make an administrative page to make this even easier and much more flexible. The first thing you're always going to need to do if you're going to build out an administrative page is come to hook menus documentation unless of course you already know this, well then you can just get started and this is going to go ahead and allow you to read up on hook menu if you're not familiar with it and use it to define different menu items so I'm gonna grab the example code here I also in my editor which I use Komodo edit I have snippets of hooks that I use often over here on the left so instead of copying it from Drupal.org I can just drop it in and it works very similar so the first step is always to change the word hook to your module name and generally what I like to do is I strip out everything but and take it one at a time so I'll go ahead and do that and I'm going to make this admin config user dash interface slash js confirm JS underscore confirm. And I'm using user interface because I want it to show up right here in the configuration user interface section. It could go anywhere. That's just the place that I picked it because it's dealing with you know, somewhat related to user interface. It could be in uh, any of these other sections if you thought it fit better there as well. That's just the one that I'm choosing to put it in for now. Give it a title of JS confirm we'll go ahead and give it a description we'll say administer JS confirm settings 
page callback. This is where we basically say what do we want or what do we want to call? What function, what Drupal function do we want to call? In this case we're going to call Drupal git form. This could be a, a function in our module, but we're going to use Drupal git form which will return a Drupal form. And now I'm going to add the page arguments. The page arguments are always going to be an array and if you're using Drupal git form the first argument that you use is actually going to be the form function that gets called. So in this case I'm going to say JS confirm settings form. As far as access arguments we could define our own permission using hook permission and I've done that in past episodes so I'm just going to use a simple one here and say access administration pages as I said before, it's probably best to define your own here and just say administer JS confirm module. But for this example, I'm just going to say if you have access to ad the administration pages, we're just going to let you administer this module as well. So now that we have our hook menu implementation, now we need to write our administration page. And our administration page is, for the most part, just a standard Drupal form using the form API. So if you need to look up the Drupal form API, you can of course get out your friendly search engine and look up information on the Drupal 7 form API and that will give you information on how to use these various form elements, but I'm going to go ahead and go right through it because it's relatively simple what we need. All I want in this example is a single text area. So I create our form. The first parameter is the form variable. The second is form settings. And because this is a little bit of a unique form as it's an admin form, we're not going to need a validation or submit handler for our form. We're just going to say form js underscore confirm pages. We're going to set this equal to an array. And this array is going to define the form element we want. In this case, we want a text area. We will give it a title. This is what's going. This is the label that's going to display. A good rule of thumb is always to run <clears throat> any text that's going to be output to the page through the T function here, just to make sure it can be translated as needed. Now this is where the tricky part comes in. We're going to declare a default value, and we're going to use the Drupal variables table. The Drupal variables table allows you to use functions such as variable underscore set and variable underscore git. So what we're going to do is do variable underscore git and we're going to use our variable that we want to create called JS confirm pages and the fallback which is the default if there is no variable by that name is we'll just use a blank string. I'm also going to give a description which I'll come back to in just a second. Before we get started, I want to, with the description, I'm going to show you right here this variable underscore get, this js underscore confirm underscore pages is the same as this js underscore confirm underscore pages. And so that's one thing to note. Also note that because I have this variable get here, and I'm going to use this statement right here, which is return, instead of just returning your form like normal, I'm going to return system settings form. This is going to add all of your administration buttons. It's also going to make sure it knows that when I save this form, it's going to save the value of this field here into this variable JS confirm pages. So I don't have to write any extra code. Drupal is just smart enough to know that when I submit this form, just save this into this JS underscore confirm pages variable so we can use it later. As far as the description, I'm going to come to the blocks page. Just click configure on one of the blocks and I'm going to steal the description right from here because I want to do the same thing. I want people to be able to enter in multiple paths and use a star character as a wildcard. So I'm going to paste that in. It's a little bit long. Make sure I my quotes right. So that's that. And there's my administration form. So I'm going to save this. 
going to come up here and I'm going to flush the cache and I'm going to take a look and see if the administration form is in fact working. So I come to configuration, user interface, I see JS confirm. Oh, I misnamed this here. It should be settings form, not setting form. So I got this error message. It's a good thing to note. Notice how I was able to debug this. It says undefined index JS confirm settings form, which essentially means JS confirm settings form wasn't found. So I needed to look. I was able to figure out that this was misprinted. I needed the S in there. Now that I got that S in there, it should be working. And as you can see, you have a simple text area. There's nothing in it. Here's our description. Here's our title. Adds the save configuration button. I'm going to go ahead and just use the front page for now and click save. You'll see that the front page stays there and we're good to go in that front. So now if I come to the front page, I want, if I click away to any other page on the site, I want to get a pop-up here. So now we need to write this extra code inside this hook init function that we added earlier. And this code's going to get a little more complex, so I'm going to try to break it down. Don't, if you're new to Drupal modules, don't get discouraged if you don't know all of this. I'll try to explain it the best I can. But just know that if you read each line, I'll try to break it up. And I would normally put this, in many cases, in one line or two lines, but I'll break it apart so you can see how the variables are getting set and how the comparisons are taking place. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a function called Drupal string to lower, which is essentially just lower cases a string. So just keep in mind, all this is doing is lower casing a, a simple string and the string we're going to use is this JS confirm pages variable that we previously created. So I'll go ahead and add a comment there so you can understand what's going on. The next step is to get the current path and we're going to use the same function we used down here. So I'm just going to copy this, current path, and I'm just setting this as a variable so you can see how all this is playing out. Now what I want to do is I want to get the current path alias, and what this means is if I'm on a node slash 5 page, for instance, it might actually have a path alias of test path, for instance, the one I created earlier, it may have a path alias of something else. So I want to actually get the path alias because we're going to need to check for both. The user might put the alias in this text area or they may also put the system path so we want to double check both of those. So I'm going to just use a variable, I'm going to call it current alias and this is going to run a function called Drupal get path alias and this is basically going to just go out and look and if it's a node slash five page for instance it's going to look and see if there's a path alias if there's a path alias, it's going to load this into the current alias variable here. Okay, so now we want to, I'm going to also do a convert this Drupal path to lowercase just in case this alias is uh, slightly different. If it has uppercase letters, I want to make sure they get converted to lowercase just to make comparisons easier. You want to make sure you're comparing correctly and you don't, in this case, we don't want case to matter. So now, now we're going to run a function and this is the same function that the blocks interface runs before it renders a block on the page so it checks using the same function. So we're going to reuse what Drupal already offers us. So we're going to check if the page matches the current path. So I'll create a variable called page match. And I'll say Drupal match path. And this is a function that if you read this little tooltip here, it says check if a path matches any pattern in a set of patterns. And it sets the first is the path and the second is the string of patterns. So first we want to use our path that we got right here. Second we want to use our patterns, which in this case is the pages that we created from this variables page. So we'll run that. Now we want to check
Now we want to do one thing here. If just in case there was an aliased path, we also want to check the current path, which would be the the system path. So this was a node slash five page. We and we checked the alias. We also want to check the non-aliased version here. So we basically check and say if the path is not equal to the current path, which means if there was in fact an alias then we're going to go ahead and run a check just on the current path as well. So we'll do page match and I'll explain what this is doing here in a second. So what this is running is it's basically saying, okay, so if this one, if the original one was true, or if it matches this current path in the pages, so if either the alias version or the non-alias version is true, then page match is going to end up true. So now what we simply need to do is say, instead of if current path equals this, we simply say if page match. So if the page matches our list, then we're going to add this JavaScript code, which is going to, of course, return this confirm form. So that's all there is to it. This is a little bit confusing code if you're not familiar with Drupal modules or PHP and you're just learning, so don't get intimidated. But if you are familiar, it shouldn't be too over the top. You should hopefully be able to pull together what it's doing. Just take it step by step. So I'm going to clear the cache just to make sure. Remember, I did enter the front page as an option here. So if I click here, I get this message. I'm going to leave the page, come back into the user configuration options. You'll notice that here I have the alias of test path, and it's node 65. If you look down in the bottom corner here, the alias is test path, and it's node 65. So I'm going to use those as examples. I can use either one would work. They'll both do the same thing. So I do node 65. And I save it. Now that I'm on this test path, which is node 65, it's the same thing. So it still gives me this message. If I want to change it to use the alias version, should give me the same message. If I come down here to node 64, now I'm on node 64, which is not the same as node 65. I guess I have the same text, so I'll go to another one. But you'll notice that I did not receive the message because it did not match that path. You can, of course, use the asterisk or the star character to match multiple paths. So if I wanted to, let's say, change it so just as a last example, on all node slash add pages, node slash add slash star, I'll save this. Now if I come in here to content, add content, and I will add a basic page in this case. I could pick any of them. They all have this node add page. If I try to click away, I get the message. So as you can see, it's this went on a little long, but it's a relatively simple module. It does one thing. It does something pretty well. Uh, it's just a JavaScript confirmation form. Obviously, it's not going to work if they don't have JavaScript in their browser, but it it is just a nice little handy way to learn how to build a Drupal module, and it may be useful depending on the context that you may need it. So thanks for watching the Daily Dose of Drupal. Thanks again to Drupalize.me for making this possible. If you'd like to sponsor the Daily Dose of Drupal, simply come to the Code Karate site, Click over here on the Daily Dose of Drupal link and click on the sponsorship page link down here and you can learn more about it. We'll see you next time on the Daily Dose of Drupal and thank you for watching.